You are looking live at the Dow Jones Industrial Average, 30 stocks, and uh, it's Saturday, so uh, welcome to my weekly review, and since the markets are closed, it can't go down today, so that's one good thing. Uh, the Dow Jones here is uh, still above the low of 32,846 that was made on October 6th. There you can see the low here, but it's still well below the 200 simple moving average. So that in and of itself is a uh, disqualifier there. It's uh, nothing good happens below the 200. This is the Russell 2000 index. This is looking worse, probably, you know, more, um, you know, bond related, you know, the 10 years of you know, approaching 5%. So it probably affects this index more than others. This is a more risk on a uh, smaller cap index and uh, it's way below the 200. So uh, that is bears. One other thing that I've got to mention is the S&P 500 closed below the 200. If I zoom in here, you can see it's just a tick below it. They're 0.2%, uh, but still closed below the 200. And you can see the short-term moving averages, the um, the 10, the 21, and the 50 all trending lower. So, um, yeah, we've got three legs here. Uh, we did have a double bottom pattern here, and now it, it's going to retest this old low. It looks like a 4,216. It only closed, what, uh, eight points above it. So maybe on Monday we can get a reversal. You know, if it opens below and then rallies, we get a pink rally day or something. Uh, but that's what we're looking at now. Um, for this last uh, leg of the uh, correction to complete. There you got one and you got your double bottom here. And then it rallied up, rejected at the 50 and now closed below the 200. So maybe it can do something like, uh, you know, close below the 4,200 level and then rally back up. But we just can't take it. Take it one day at a time as we always do. And the NASDAQ is the stronger of the indexes and it is just retesting the lows. Uh, at uh, 12, uh, 963, that was made on September 27th, I believe. If I can zoom in there, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, September 27th, and you can see on uh, Friday, it uh, approached the low at, at 977, but uh, 14 points above. And that, but you can see these ha inverted hammer candles on the NASDAQ here. And we had this same situation a few weeks back, and it and it led to um you know a reversal. You can see that right here, one, two, three of those inverted hammer candles. We saw them here, right here, boom, 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 which led to an eventual attempted rally and a follow through day, which failed, and then we saw it again here, which led to that pink rally day. And then, you know, a, a attempted rally, which failed. So all the rallies are failing. <laughs> and uh, all the king's horses and all the king's men cannot put this market back together again. So anyway, we just I try to curate, you know, a watch list. I've had to go to the weekly because really we're just in a trade range. Uh, if you look at the uh, longer, uh, bigger picture here, it's been about three years where the NASDAQ has just been trading around the 13,000 level you know yeah it went up and when this is going up like this this is when you should be trimming and becoming a little more nervous and then when it goes down here that's 38 percent peak to trough uh, correction down here is when you should be getting more excited and have this watch list ready to go for the rally and if you miss this rally well now we're just back to you know the the midpoint of the um you know the trade range here so I think, you know, you get more bullish when it goes higher and you get more bearish when it goes lower, but it should actually be the opposite. You should be getting more excited the lower it goes or, or be ready to pounce the lower it goes. And anyway, I wanted to point out on the monthly, I'm just going to spend a lot of time in the indexes today. Not a lot of stocks to talk about, but I will get to some stocks in a minute. Is it uh, this, this month is the uh, third month. It's down, what, uh, one7 Eight percent with seven sessions left, so it could certainly rally and, and trade higher. But it hasn't been uh, down three months in a row since um, last year when we had the uh, nasty bear market in the uh, oil and gas stocks was the only game in town. The uh, Nasdaq sold off April, May, and June of 2022, and before that, like even the COVID uh, crash was only two months. It was down. You've got to go back to 2015 
here when it was down three months, uh, December 2015 and January, February of 2016. And before that, it was 2011 when it was down um, four months here, which was a nasty correction after the, uh, you know, the financial crash, uh, crisis crash, which was, um, you know, it was down, you know, only three months there and two months here. It was a nasty uh it was a nasty bear market, but three months in a row. I mean, it happens, yeah, 08, uh, 11, 15, 16, uh, 22, and now again, maybe in 23. So it doesn't happen that often. Um, so we're the lucky ones. We get it uh, now two years in a row here, unless it starts to rally, um, which it you know, quite possibly could. Anyway, that's it for the index. Um, it's uh, What we're seeing is just a multiple contraction. You know, the earnings are, uh, the S&P earnings were a little steep. And um, so as the yields go up, the, you know, the multiples compress a little bit. So the earnings aren't worth quite as much. And speaking of earnings, you know, some of these companies, these big mega cap tech companies don't have much in the way of growth or innovation or earnings. And, uh, you know, I think anything that has relies on a lot of uh uh, revenues from China is going to be in trouble, as we saw last week with NVIDIA and the uh, Biden administration cracking down on the AI chip tolerance. And, um, you know, we saw Tesla with a bad report and Apple, the government uh, banned uh, their employees from um, government employees from using the iPhone and Huawei uh, phones are now the top uh, iPhone uh, phone, a cell phone, smartphone in uh, China and Apple is number two. So, yeah, you got to be careful if you have a lot of exposure to China right now. Um, <clears throat> anyway, I'm going to start with the Magnificent Seven. This is Apple. Got that double bottom. Closed below the uh, 50, though, and it's um, 2.6 below the 50. They don't report earnings till November 2nd. That's going to be a big day for earnings. Um, Microsoft looking a little better than Apple uh, because it's above the 50, but still got that double bottom look consolidation pattern. They report... Tuesday. Now, if the, um, you know, the AI theme, you know, bull market is going to be intact, Microsoft and Google are going to have to, you know, really deliver some strong earnings and uh, try to buoy this market a little bit. This is a, a Google and it uh, closed just a tick below its 21. I mean, any stock around the 21 in this current tape is doing really well. So that's holding up well. They report earnings Tuesday as well. And then Meta Platforms on Wednesday. This one's consolidating in a base, and it's above its uh, 50, 1.9% above the 50. So Meta's hanging in there. Amazon reports Thursday. They are not hanging in there. <laughs> this one is uh, got up to the 50. It's what I wanted to point out with the NASDAQ as well. Got up to the 50, got rejected last week. It got the Motombo. So I'm going to go back to the NASDAQ because I did uh, you know, omit that point. Is it the NASDAQ? rallied up to its 50 during this little attempted rally and then on monday had a nice day but it came up to the 50 and got rejected then tuesday came up to the 50 and uh, closed near the middle of the range and then that rejection accelerated on wednesday thursday and especially friday and um these options expiration fridays have turned into uh, quite a, a trend here and uh, that's a, another topic for another video but uh, it's a real thing here. Okay, I went through Apple, Microsoft, Google, Meta, Amazon, and I've got to get to Tesla, which reported pretty much a you know a brutal quarter, and it uh, got its uh, just desserts there, and it traded down to the 200, closed 1.2% below the 200, nothing good happens below the 200, so I'm um, just going to keep our eye on that one as it... Um, I don't know, maybe it's going to return to this old buy point here. Um, NVIDIA, like I said, uh, the, uh, you know, it's rough when uh, politics bleeds into your investments, and it certainly did with this one last week. You could see the news here on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and it just uh, sliced to 50 and really f fell off here. A rough week for uh, NVIDIA was down 9%. That's a big move for a stock that large. And they don't report for a long time, so 11.21, so they've got a ways to go. So this week we got Microsoft and uh, Alphabet on Tuesday, Meta Platforms on Wednesday, and Amazon on Thursday. And that's going to set the tone for the market for the week, I, I believe, unless the, the, the yields keep going crazy. What we have here is a, um, 
you know, kind of like 2022, where the energy complex is the stronger groups and everything else is pretty much selling off kind of rough. And uh, anyway, this is a AMR. They they said that they're going to um, lower guidance for their production and it traded down to the 50. So that one does not looking good. And the sector is uh, CIX is one that's holding up, traded down to its 21. One of the stronger uh, stocks in that group. This is uh, you know Energy Coal, it's a number two overall group. And this is uh, Arch Resources, still above the 50. You know, anything above the 50 is okay in this tape. Um, a couple of the uh, oil and gas stocks. I'm just going to go through these quickly, just pointing out that they're showing strength here. This is range resources right at the uh, 10 EMA. Tidewater is holding up. It's holding water 1.4% above the 10. So that one is holding up as well. Uh, Weather Ford traded almost down to its 50, but still 2.5% above the 50. That one's holding up. Oceaneering, another one, you know, above the 21 or right at the 21, 0.3% below. So that one's holding up as well. Um, LBRT, this came up on my screens and you can see why relative strength uh, had an inside day on Friday, but I would say that one's holding up pretty well. Um, let me see. Oh, and Shell, the big... Um, Oil and gas integrated stock made a new high last week, pulled back to its 10 on uh, Friday. So that one is showing strength as well. Anyway, the oil and gas and, of course, the insurance stocks. I mean, with the sexy insurance stocks are uh, showing strength. You know, you're in a tough tape. This one sliced its 50 on Friday. They announced a um, an acquisition. Usually when you make an acquisition, you sell off a little bit. Gallagher has been showing strength, though. This is a... Uh, Arch Capital, this one traded down to its 21, closed slightly above it on Friday. So that one's holding up. Goosehead, Goosehead was making new highs and then just sold off back to the 50. It broke out and then pulled back. That's what happens in tough tapes. You know, they just sell the rips. Opposite of buying the dips, they're just selling the rips. Anything that's up is going to get sold. So they're going to take profits. And then KNSL is another stock that's showing strength, but that's last week, the last three sessions sliced at 21, but it's still 3.7% above the 50. So showing strength. Uh, there's some other stocks around. I'm going to just go randomly. Um, I don't know what you think about the weight loss drugs. It doesn't matter. Uh, these stocks are showing strength and, you know, because they have the earnings and sales growth. Uh, Lily just pulled back to its uh, 21. That one looks good to me. Um, Novo Nordisk, another one uh, above the 21. I mean, <laughs> above the 21 in this tape, as I say, just uh, pretty strong. Vertex marches to the beat of its own drum, uh, just closed slightly above the 21. So uh, that one shows well. So there's a few drug stocks that are holding up. Not many, though. Drug stocks have been hammered the last couple of years. Elastic, going to some software names now, just pulled back to the 21 and found support. So uh, that one's showing strength. CrowdStrike, this is one that I own. Had to trim a lot because I wanted to reduce my exposure to the market. And uh, this one just pulled back to its 21 on Friday. So any, any stock above the 21, as I say, doing well. Zscaler, uh, it sliced the 21, then closed slightly below it. So it's not doing quite as well as CrowdStrike. And these cybersecurity stocks, they've been switching... Um, leadership over time. And Palo Alto was a leader for a long time as well as Fortinet. But now it looks like CrowdStrike and Zscaler are going to hold that mantle as uh, this one traded down nearly to its uh, 50 on uh, Friday. Still, you know, consolidating. Looks looks okay. Um, CDNS, this, they report on Monday, I believe. CDNS and Synopsys, the computer software design stocks, above the 50. We'll see what they have to say on Monday after the close. Uh, I did mention synopsis in the same group, uh, just um, you know, 2.1% 2, 2 above the 50 holding up. And then Bentley Systems is another one that had a nice little consolidation, pulled back to the 50 on Friday, probably going to get some pin action from CDNS report one way or the other. You never know which way those earnings are going to go. And the last one I wanted to show you is Axon. And that's it for me today.
uh, hang in there. You should be getting, you know, your watch list, um, you know, curated and uh, fine tuned and be ready for uh, a pink rally day or just an attempted rally soon. This is Axon. Uh, like I said, it uh, is holding up above its uh, 50. So 2.5% above the 50. Any stock doing that is doing well. Anyway, that's it for me, as I say, but I do have one more thing in honor of the great Steve Jobs. I've got to go to the... Um, the um, Dow Jones Industrial Average here, because I, you know, if you listen to Stan Druckenmiller and Lee Cooperman, a couple other of these, uh, you know, well-known traders who've done well in the market over years and years, that they believe that we are in a 16-year window where we're not going to sustain new highs like the Dow Jones in 1966 to 1982, um, where it did it did rally up to an old high, and I, I bet you if the Nasdaq rallied to 16.2, we'd all be happy campers uh we'd love that but um the rallies do not sustain you know they go up to new highs and pull back go up to a new high then pull back and continue to do that over and over and over again this is not the end of the world it just means that the, you know it's a stock picker's market there's a lot of great stocks from 66 to 82 like mcdonald's and uh, honeywell and home depot lockheed martin walmart ibm um so you know bristol myers kroger's so don't get uh, discouraged uh, because the index is, uh, you know, <clears throat> not performing as we would want. And don't get discouraged if we stay in a you know trade range for a long time because there are those winning stocks. It just places an emphasis on, uh, you know, stock picking ability. You know, as the index goes down, there will be stocks that um, trade higher. Uh, but, you know, it looks like about 90% of stocks are trading with the market right now. So we'll just stay positive. We'll uh, create our watch list and um, wait for a rally. I'm not in the mood to short. I don't know. It's just a mindset that I have. And the lower it goes, the more um, anxious or excited I will be to start putting some money to work as uh, we attempt another rally. It will happen at some point. <laughs> anyway, that's it for me this week at mcstockcharts.com. We never give up. Thank you for watching.